In this video, I will show you how to set up boost by gear with potentiometer control and an extra over boost momentary switch. Once again, I'll be using the AutoSim Engine Simulator 1 to demonstrate every, all the um, parameters and activities. This is a very good piece of equipment. It's on all the information is on screen. Okay, let's start now. Our first thing we're going to have to do is set up the potentiometer and set up our gear ratios. So let's start, start with setting up our potentiometer and our switch. We're going to go to input analogs and we're going to set up a user channel. In this case I have it set to channel 1 and we set this up and it's linear and it's a feedback pot so we set the the destination we could call it all the pressure or whatever but no it's feedback pot 1 potentiometer and the span is 5000 and the offset is 0 these sound complicated but are relatively easy to calculate for example let's use and the software does it for you let's use oil pressure and we want to calculate now based on for example one that I know which would be the Honeywell oil pressure sensor which is 0 to 100 psi we know our sensor type is volts we know that our minimum voltage for that is 0 0.5 and we know that's at zero bar we know that our maximum is 4.5 and we know that that's 100 psi which is 6.895 and our analog input range is 5 volts and we hit OK and the software will tell us the span should be set to 580 and the offset to minus 862 now in this case we're using a feedback pot and if we did the same calculation again on that, it's pretty straightforward. In this case, we're using sensor type 0 volts, 0%, 5 volts, 100%. And that tells us the 5000 and 0. So there we go, we have our pot set up. And we have it set up on input analog 1, which is pin 8. Now we want to set up a switch. We want to set up a, a switch that we can have like an overboost setting for. So we go down now to output setup and the first thing we're going to create is a software switch variable so we go to IO switch to variable 1 and we select on no output we then from there we then set up our all four have been grayed out all of these the input switch to variables but we'll notice the first one now you can enter so we enter that and we set up the pin which we're using in this case we're using pin 18 which is software switch 1 input we're going to set our mode to monostable, I explained these in a previous video, straight through is a simple on off switch toggle is on is on, then on is off, then on is on so forth. Stretch pulse is when you turn your switch on after you've turned it off it still stays active for the time you set so if you turn your switch off it'll stay active for seven seconds more. Monostable is best used with a momentary switch I find like a uh, horn button is a momentary switch you just press it when you let go it turns off uh, so you can set a momentary switch driver can hit that switch and then seven seconds later the the switch will the software switch setting will go this will disactivate alright now once we have that set up now we need to go now and we need to set up our gear ratios so first thing we need to set up is I'm going to be using HSI 3 input and then you set up the scale um, in this case the calculation is straightforward it's written in the software it's meters per pulse or basically wheel circumference divided by number of pulses per rev alright um, this is set up for my specific thing my specific uh, engine simulator and it will not be close to what you will get for each different application vice versa you have to go now and set up your gear ratios again these gear ratios are way off based on what I'm using in my software in my um, engine simulator but they work for me okay once we have those set up we can then turn our attention now to setting up our outputs so the first output we're going to set up is we're going to pick any one of GPCs lower down ones because the software output doesn't matter so let's say GPC4 enter and you scroll down from disable to any one of the software outputs in this case I pick software output 1 
Next we're going to enable the actual GPC that controls our boost valve. In this case I've picked GPC1 and I've selected pin 28 which is a PWM output pin. Correct. Now that's set up now. We hit escape and we go to our M6 menu and we'll see we have GPC4 and GPC1 there. First thing is GPC4. Let's set that up. So our setup for GPC4 is a user table G which is a 6x4 table. No feedback and we'll call it boost function 1. Inhibit. Now this is where our overboost switch comes in. Inhibits can not only be set to turn something off but to output a specific percentage. In this case we want our software output to output 95% once the switch is activated. So we set it to minus 5 inhibit and 95% maximum. Anything over 95% and it will inhibit and output 95%. And Alright, we go from there now to our table setup. Here we're using gear ratio for the x-axis and input analog for the y-axis. So let's go down to our table. Okay, now here's what we've done. Since our settings were if we go back here we we'll see that our settings were 9.21 for first gear so I've set 8 and 11 so that 9.21 kind of falls in between the two of them and as you'll see they both have the same number of values entered our second gear was 18.46 therefore I've set 16 and 20 it falls between the two of them and the third gear was 27.69 I've set 25 and 29 so the figures we end up with is 10, 15, 20 50, 55, 60, 70, 75, 80. These values will, values will now be used in one of the axes of the main GPC1 table. So let's go now. We can actually test to see how this works out. We start our engine and we select first gear. Uh, this here. And we'll see it goes to first gear. And if we Look carefully, we can see gear ratio 9.24. We switch to second gear, we see 18.48. And we switch third gear, we see 27.74 on the gear ratio. And the potentiometer will adjust down or up to these numbers, no matter which gear we switch to. Down or up. There we go. And that puts it to 1. Alright, so we can switch off now. And let's go now to set up our boost auxiliary output table. Set up for this, again, we want a big table for this, so user table A, which is a 10 by 8 table. No feedback, and we named it boost auxiliary. You can name it whatever you want um, from the selection. Alright, now our inhibits in this case now, because we are no longer using the Autronics over boost fuel cut protection, we want at least some sort of protection. So we set our inhibit output to zero. What this means is that the valve will shut off if any of these inhibits are met. So if the manifold pressure falls below 100 kPa, which is uh, basically zero boost, zero vacuum, um, because at 100 kp is absolute, you are trying to always reason absolute. So if it falls below 100, we would, but the boost valve will no longer be active because we don't need it to be active. If the boost goes over 260, if we decide that's our maximum amount of boost we want to run, then it'll revert back to waste gate pressure. We also set in here throttle position so that when we're cruising below 15%, we don't have to worry about the valve pulsing away for no reason. Alright, so now we go down to our table setup, and in this one now, we're going to use for the x-axis the software output 1, which means that any value being output will correspond to that axis. Then, and for the y-axis, we're going to use engine speed, and this is what our table will look like. Now, here's what we're doing. Since we're in first gear, this is where we lie. Our potentiometer adjusts us back and forth from this one. And these are the duty cycles running up and down. So at zero potentiometer, 
in first gear this would be your valve duty control duty cycle at 50 percent this would be duty cycle and 100 percent this would be duty cycle once again 50 represents 0 percent 0 percent potentiometer on second gear and this would be the juice cycle for that this would be 50 percent this column 50 percent potentiometer in second gear 100 percent potentiometer in second gear and of course now this is third gear 0 percent potentiometer 50 percent potentiometer and 100 percent potentiometer the 90 now is your overboost amount controlled by that switch so here's how you could set up a gear base system you could make your 50 percent to 100 percent in second gear the same amount so you basically put your potentiometer in first gear and second gear you put your potentiometer 50 percent and you adjust the boost you'll do a run you'll log it you'll see what percentages you need to correct this to make this right and once you have this correct you'll put the same numbers in here this means whether your potentiometer is a zero or a hundred you will have the same boost in first gear same thing goes for second gear you do your 50 percent and you get that once you get that map to the maximum boost you want in second gear you set the same settings for the hundred percent of the potentiometer now for third gear now obviously you can have this is where you can have your adjustable boost in third gear and up you will set your 40 percent your 50 percent for what you consider your normal boost and then you can your normal boost for third gear or your and then you can set higher duty cycles um, for third gear and what this does is that when you adjust from 50 to 100 you don't interfere with the boost in second and first and alternatively if we throw now and we throw let's, let's start the engine up and there we go we're at 5500 rpm we can move the rpm over down and we right now are in first gear we can switch to second gear and there we go and we can switch to third gear and there we go but if we throw our switch if we go and throw our switch now you'll see it'll go to the very last column there we go so we're in it we're past the last column which means what is in that last column is the duty cycle now so that can be a timed over boost you see it, the time just cut out so it's gone back we can do it again and as soon as the time is up it'll go back to whatever gear it was in in this case I put it back to second and that's simply how it'll work so if your throttle position drops below 15 percent you will see if you look at GPC 1 duty it goes to zero don't mind the little red mark look down at GPC 1 duty in blue you see it goes to zero as soon as the throttle goes over 15 it will start back vice versa if your boost level also if your boost level that was to go above 260 your GPC duty would drop to zero and you will back up waste gate pressure alright and that's about it for boost control by gear with a potentiometer and an extra overboost switch thanks for watching